Standard no frills assault rifles in Warframe are pretty much a dime a dozen. There's plenty of them to choose from, so the only question worth asking can the Rattleguts impress or not? Hey guys, welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this primary weapon. As per the usual, I'm gonna give you a cheap build, something affordable that most players should be able to build. But of course, we also have the quote unquote end game setup with a Riven, even though Riven disposition for this one is currently only one out of five. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I'm gonna take my time and explain whatever I feel is necessary for new players, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. With that out of the way, let's jump into the rattle guts. But before all that, this video is brought to you by me and all the fantastic people that choose to support the content. Thank you guys so much. Want to get access to fantastic perks such as loyalty badges, custom wallpapers and the option to vote on what I work on next? That's how this review happened by the way. Check the link in the cards right now or click on the join button which is next to the subscription button. You can support the channel via Patreon, YouTube membership or even Twitch subs. Links are in the description down below. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Rattleguts primary is basically a standard no frills assault rifle. That's right my friends, there's no fancy projectiles here, no explosions, not even a secondary fire mode. This is your standard basic assault rifle. And it may appear that it's projectile based, it is not. I know that the energy trail can mislead some people, this is a true blue hit scan weapon. As soon as you pull the trigger, you will be getting damage on your target. When it comes to the accuracy and the recoil of the weapon, well, take a look. It has one of those climbing recoils, even though there's no spool up or fire rate increase effects into the mechanics of the weapon. But after it stabilizes, which takes roughly 1.5 seconds, you're gonna get that little jitter effect. And that's pretty much it for functionality. So if the 50 assault rifles in Warframe were not good enough for you, here's number 51. Honestly, I don't know if there's actually 50, but there's a lot of them, that's the point. When it comes to building the Rattleguts primary, you might be curious, okay, what? Um, grip should I use and what loader. Normally, I like to give you options. Hey, go with this grip and that loader and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the rattle guts, there's a pretty clear way of building the quote-unquote best rattle guts right now, in terms of DPS, of course. It's gonna be Tremor with Splat or kill stream depending on your preferences. I'm sorry, my friends. It's kind of... From a DPS perspective, again, from a mathematical perspective, this is the way you should go. Sorry if that does not agree with you, but it's just how things are right now. Mod capacity, 60 out of 60, and if your rattle guts has only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and plug in the Auto King Catalyst, which will be doubling your mod capacity. Now you can get this one from Nightwave, you can grind it from Nightwave, you can pay 20 plat to have one installed, and you can also get a blueprint from the daily sorting. When it comes to the Arcane, honestly, it doesn't really matter all that much from my subjective point of view. If you want a little bit and just a little bit more DPS, then you might want to go with Pax Seeker. If not, if you want to forget about ammo issues and all whatnot, you can go with Pax Charge. These two do not affect the DPS of the actual weapon. Speaking about not affecting the DPS of the weapon, Exilus Mod Slot. Honestly, again, this one you can leave not unlocked if you don't have a whole lot of resources. Now, it's true, more usability will mean more DPS, more actual gameplay DPS, so I would recommend you go with Stabilizer. You can go with Terminal Velocity, why? It's hit scan. no point to go in with Terminal Velocity, but if you want to do it with fire rate, overdo it, my bad, with fire rate, you might want to consider Vigilante Supplies. But you can get your ammo in a number of different ways, for example, you can drop a pad, oh no, drop a pad, drop a pad, how horrible, or you can use a carrier with ammo case, the choice, as always, is yours. Accuracy 20, honestly, this is a little bit on the low side, allow me to show you what Heavy Caliber does to this one, with some multi-shot, of course, with some multi-shot, because without multi-shot, you're not really gonna see the effects of Heavy Cal. Essentially, the initial bullet doesn't really go that much far off the crosses, but the resulting bullets from multi-shot, well, that's a different kettle of fish. The usual 50 meter test, my friends. And as you can see, some of these bullets are landing completely off the crossers. 
Don't get me wrong, it's not terrible. You can play with it as is for close range shots and all whatnot, but honestly, it's not really worth going with Heavy Cal from my subjective point of view. Critical chance 33% with a nice critical multiplier of 2.3x. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, think about it this way. Just with, hold on, crit. Just with point strike alone and you're going to 82.5. If you got Argon scope, those are guaranteed crits, my friends. Absolutely phenomenal. Fire rate of 9, which is solid, a magazine of 67, and a reload of 1.7. Now, if you go with Killstream instead of Splat, you're gonna have 1.3 seconds reload, but a smaller magazine. Multi shot of 1, noise alarming, Riven disposition of 1 out of 5. Because there's new rules in Warframe, every brand new weapon, and this theoretically is considered a brand new weapon, comes out with Riven Dispo of 1 out of 5. There are very good reasons for this. But somehow I feel hollow and dead inside every time I see Riven disposition of 1 out of 5. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, my friends. That is Jans, 11%. Ah, ah, a little bit low. A tiny bit low. Then on the other hand, you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna get Hunter Mumu on here. So we're not gonna care about the weapon status Jans anymore. Which is kind of a good thing and not a good thing at the same time. Because take a look at the damage on the weapon. Hmm. We got Impact Puncture Slash and Radiation, and since the four times IPS rule is gone in Warframe, because who needs build diversity and depth and all that, let's just make everything more on proof. Radiation is prop priority number one, Puncture prop priority number two, and only then Slash. And you might say, hey man, yeah, but I can use Slash and get more Slash, because Slash, pointless, pointless, do not. Do this is not a very smart idea. And with that out of the way, let's jump into a standard build. And we got damage serration, multi shot with split chamber, critical chance, critical damage combo between point strike, vital sense, hunter, mumu! Yay! And the vital elemental combo between the two 60 60 mods, as well as stabilizer in the weapon excellence mod slot. And what do you know? I don't have my last mod populated. Why is that? Because you have a bunch of options, and I would just like to highlight a couple. Let's go new player friendly, let's go I don't have expensive mods, more multi shot, always good, always easy, always vigilante armaments with 60% plus multi shot, now it's true, it's not as much as a split chamber, but still good enough, honestly this is a fantastic and versatile mod, because in Warframe, essentially multi shot trumps almost everything no matter the weapon, in 99 point, I'm gonna say 0.6 again, percent of the cases, why 0.6, ha! That, that's that's actually not important right now. Now, let's say that you do have more expensive mods, right? You can go to more crit. I know you guys love crit. I love crit. Everybody loves crit, but we I don't like this, even though I like crit. Argon Scope. With this one, you're going way over 100% critical chance. Say hello to orange crits. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Those are a couple of options. Want some more? Well, when you have a hefty magazine, it's always a good idea to go with fire rate. What can I get? Firestorm? Why? Why would you even allow Firestorm on this web? Anyway, if you got Prime Shred, use Prime Shred. If not, Shred, Punch Through, and 40% Fire Rate. Honestly, my friends, this is a great compromise. Punch Through in Warframe is a form of AoE, right? Your bullets will be going through the initial target and keep traveling. They can hit multiple targets. Now, it's also true. It's not going to be useful in every single case scenario, but Shred or Prime Shred are fantastic. Options, speed trigger, if you want speed trigger, there you go. But of course, my favorite, Vile Acceleration, my friends. 90% fire rate and minus 15% damage. What's that? You don't know how to farm corrupted mods? Link in the cards right now. <laughs> what? I had to do it. Now, some of you might be hesitant on this one because of the minus 15% damage. Guys, it takes 15% away from your serration, okay? Simply think of it like that. Honestly, it's not that big of a deal. You wanna go with Caroso, guys? Yes, we'll go with Caroso too, but later, much later. First, let's check that Harrow doesn't have anything to skew the test results. No, he does not. By the way, this is my Necromancer Harrow fashion. Take a pick, take a pick, done. Okay, level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goons, the usual benchmark, my friends. And of course, we're gonna go straight for Headshot. For any Slash viral build, the test is hit a target till about 50%, then watch the Slashes. Yeah. <laughs> Of course it'll work, of course it'll work. There are a whole lot of bullets with hefty amount of damage and you got Hunter Mumu with great crit stats on the weapon. What exactly were you expecting? Yes, it does pack a punch in the same way that the other, I don't know, 20, 50 assault rifles in Warframe can pack a punch as long as it has crit. Because if it doesn't have, have crit, then it's gotta rely on status. And for all their bluster, the status chance in Warframe is still not actually all that fantastic. 
So as you can see, my friends, you can go for something like this. With fire rate, is a whole lot easier than before. And you know what? Even with splat and not kill stream, that 1.7 uh, seconds recharge time, reload time, better said, is actually fantastic as it is. You don't need any shorter than that. Not in normal gameplay, honestly. 1.7 seconds. Of course, if you overdo it with fire rate, that's another kettle of fish. Mm. Let's change it up. Yes, I know you guys want big crits. Big crit, mama. Big, big. I want it big. Here you go. You want it big. <laughs> Sorry, I am sorry, I'll stop now, I promise I'll stop. We'll try it with Argon Scope and then we'll switch to Corrosive. There you go. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, guaranteed crit chance, okay? Without Argon Scope, there were still plenty of shots that were not getting the crit, but like this, honestly, is a bit more comfortable. And if you don't go overboard with fire rate, and by all intents and purposes, you shouldn't, there's no need to, you don't need to worry about losing your ammo all the time or reloading as fast. I mean, how many bullets was that? 15 bullets? Or let's see, 51. Oh, that's enough. 14 bullets in the target. That is dead. That is dead, my friends. I could have even fired less than that. Now, if you played Counter-Strike when you were, well, younger like I did, you got this reflex of reloading after you kill a target. I know it's a stupid reflex to have on Warframe, but there you go. And that's what our guns got. How about some uh, corrosive for all, for all time's sake? Yes. It's not as powerful as Viral and Hunter Mumu. It's not, but for all time's sake, come on, come on. If you're like me, you love Caroso like I love Caroso. So let's see, how much Caroso should we put on this one? First of all, we're not gonna need any heat. We're gonna go with high voltage. We can keep Hunter munitions here, but without the Viral to amplify the value of the slashes, it's kind of pointless. So instead, what we can go, we can go with more damage or we can go with more multi-shot or some fire rate, yes. Fire rate always very nice. Very nice, mama. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's go with Shred or Prime. Nah, screw it. We'll go like this. Like this. My favorite. My favorite. Alright, this will be a corrosive setup. Honestly, you don't need to go for what is quote-unquote meta in Warframe. What exactly asks you to play meta? Not even Eidolon hunts are inflexible like they used to be. Go for whatever gives you more joy. And to me, always impact damage. As soon as I shoot, I want to see that big damage has always been more satisfying, which is why I'm firmly against viral in general and hunter munitions. And you might say, okay, but you showcase it all the time. Yes, because I showcase what's better. I give you the options. It doesn't mean I like it, per se. You hear me, D? God darn it. Give us more power to corrosive or perhaps introduce another element or perhaps balance them. I don't know. Maybe you can even balance them and give more power back to gas as well. Once upon a time, there were several builds that worked. You know, you had corrosive, hunter mumu viral, yes, and gas or fa fantastic builds. Nowadays, Viral, everything viral hunter munitions. Honestly, it's so annoying. But enough about my crying. Let's talk about Riven mods. This one is not mine. It's a loner from a friend. Thank you so much, Zach. Zach? Zach, love you, buddy. Thank you so much. Now, this one, multi shock, critical chance, critical damage minus impact. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Fantastic. Absolutely beautiful. Now, because of the outstanding Riven disposition, it cannot go to minus 100% impact. Why do people look for minus 100% impact or IPS in general? We want to take off the possibility of impact or puncture to proc on our targets, making room for more of the procs that we do want to see on our targets, right? That also impact is freaking annoying. They remade the elements at the start of 2020, but somehow they managed to make impact as annoying as it was. So, there you go, my friends. This is the ribbon we're gonna be testing today. Today. It's a great ribbon, honestly. It's hard to get a better roll than that. I need to roll the map, but that is basically as close to perfect as it gets. All right, level 120, same corrupted heavy goons as before. Just a couple of shots. The slashes are fantastic. The damage is fan. Look. 8,300 slash man from an assault rifle, that is definitely not small. Let's see, how many bullets do I actually need to do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm gonna say 8 bullets. That, nah, I think I shot, eh, uh, I think it's gonna be on the edge. Will I win? Ah, ah, not. Okay, maybe 10 bullets or something like that. Of course, it depends on how lucky you get the crits and the procs. Is it worth going for a Riven on a Dispo 1 weapon? From a strictly subjective point of view, no. Honestly not, but if you love the weapon and if you want to get the absolute most you want out of it, you're gonna need a Riven. The problem is with this Dispo 1, in order for the actual Riven to be quote-unquote slottable, yes, you're gonna need a fantastic roll. And even though the Dispo is low, Riven traders will be charging a whole lot of plat for Rivens such as these. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, Tam Tam, <laughs> Tam Tam, yeah. Time to bump up everything with Warframe buffs and for that we're gonna be using the ever so lovely 
Lady Mirage Prime and her fantastic uh, buffs. Yeah. Rifle Amp, sure, in this case, floor fantastically well. Against Grenier, there's always the better option of Corrosive Projection. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not as powerful as it used to be, but it still is pretty much meta. But we don't care about meta, and for the sake of proving a point, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go with Physique. Nah, there you go. Now, when it comes to Arcane, we're gonna go with Arcane Rage R5, a 15% chance for plus 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. Beautiful Arcane. Not more beautiful than Arcane Avenger R5. On damage, 21% chance for plus 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. Bonus additive after, so it simply stacks on top of what you already have. And once upon a time, you could double stack Avenger or Rage or whatever else, and they decided to ruin that fun too, so there you go. Sadly, those are the current conditions in Warframe. Now, physique won't matter, honestly. That's why I'm proving a point without a aura that actually increases the damage of the weapon. We're gonna bump up the level to level 150 corrupted heavy goons. We're gonna be on pausing the eyes so they can hit me and I can get me buffs. Speaking about me buffs. Oh, darn it, I forgot. Fine, I'll just use the Sentinel afterwards. Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase, as well as her ever so lovely clones. And of course, the weapon now has gone full-blown monster. Take a look at this. Oh my god, that slash from the uh, proc of uh, the arcane. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. With this level of buffs, thank you very much. But of course, you can go even harder than this. You can use a sentinel. Everybody keeps telling me, laser, use the sentinel. Fine, Helios Prime with whatever weapon you want on it whatever sentinel you want on it, and use the Vigilante mods to get yourself 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. It's a fantastic buff, but uh, don't get me wrong, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make a difference. And still, we're since we're doing everything to make a difference, fine, fine. Can I say projection again? One more time, my favorite part of the review, honestly. Level 150, Corrupted Heavy Goons versus Mirage Prime. Now it's also true, dude, you're hiding behind the invulnerability. It's true, it's true, but I just want to see the carnage. Oh, oh, that is beautiful. Take a look. One shot. Will that kill it? Yeah, that's gonna kill it. That's 11,000. I see you. Ah, maybe, maybe. Oh my god, no, but so close, so close. So of course you can get a one shot out of this weapon with buffs such as these, my friends. And if you think Mirage can survive, well, she of course she can survive. And ever since she'll get gating and all whatnot, she's actually having an easier time surviving. So let me just undo the whole invulnerability thing. Hold on, here we go. Now though, I'm gonna actually have to play like you would normally m meet like this pack of heavy gunners. If you were to meet in an actual mission, you would have to hide a little bit. But of course I can just do this like so. Now, what's also helping me a whole lot in this case are the um, radiation procs because they start shooting each other. And I do believe, my friends, that is pretty much it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you got any sorts of feedback for me. I would love to read it in the comment section down below. Also, in the comment section down below if you want to suggest any particular type of content. But in all honesty, my friends, I can exactly promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because these things kind of take a while to make. But what I can promise you is that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends.